Hello and welcome to the DLC where we talk about news in the gaming world throughout the week. My name is Neil. Let's go ahead and kick things off. Earlier this month, Japan updated its unfair competition prevention law to include modding of consoles and save game editors. The addition was added to the technical restriction measure, where they included the transfer of tools and programs for remodeling data software, the selling of product keys online, and paying to have your save data modded by a third party. What happens to the offenders? Well, they could be slapped with a 1 million yen fine, which translates roughly to about 46,000 US dollars, and could even include up to five years in prison. Now, this change is really geared towards more third-party companies that are selling modding tools and modded equipment to players instead of the companies or developers that have already given that out, as Japan still does accept modding. However, they just don't want you to go to another company in order to be able to do it. Want a refund? Well, you can't have it, says EA. One Reddit user going by the name of Papa Miji, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Took to Reddit to detail how EA refused to give him a refund for a Star Wars Battlefront that he purchased through Origin for 15 euros. Now, according to EA's Great Game Guarantee, you can receive a refund for a game if you meet the following requirements. One, it's within 24 hours since you first launched the game. Two, it's within 14 days of the day that you bought it if you haven't launched the game. And three, if it's within 14 days from the release date if you pre-ordered the game and if you haven't launched it yet. In the Reddit feed, Papa MJ, I'm just gonna call him that from now on, provides screenshots of multiple conversations with several different EA customer support team agents, showing where even though that he falls within the requirements, EA still won't give him a refund. He even managed to get all the way up to a supervisor <laughs> and is told that he didn't contact them within 24 hours when in fact the first ticket was. Later, he was told, and I quote, as we have automated tool in place for the same so we from our side cannot check that. The tool automatically checks it and processes the refund. So now EA is saying that they don't even manually process refunds anymore and have no way of doing so and they're leaving everything up to the machines. Skynet all over again. Papa MJ has said that he has been contacted by someone at EA after going public and will continue to provide updates as it progresses. The Fallout franchise is all about what happens in the aftermath of a nuclear war. With Fallout 76, Bethesda promised that those nukes would be put into the players' hands. Except, on January 1st, players found that all enemies that hold nuclear launch codes had disappeared. And what's more, players that had the launch codes that they found were locked out of the nuclear silos for 9,999 hours. That would mean that you couldn't even launch a nuke until June 19th of 2019. Turns out... There was a bad line of code that turned off the ability to use nuclear warheads, a feature that was highlighted as one of the game's prominent features once the clock flipped over from 2018 to 2019. Bethesda has since patched the bug so players can go back to nuclear war, but this is just yet another mark against Bethesda's long, rocky history with Fallout 76. You know, perhaps the number 76 is the number of issues that the game had at launch. If you haven't already heard, Capcom has released a demo for Resident Evil 2 today, January 11th. Capcom is calling this demo the one-shot demo. In this demo, you get to play a special scenario as Leon Kennedy, where you get to solve puzzles and fight zombies as you try to escape the police station. What's the catch? You only get 30 minutes to beat the demo. That's right, after the 30 minutes are up, you won't be able to play the demo at all anymore. This is probably to help prevent what happened with the Resident Evil 7 demo, where a lot of players were able to glitch into certain areas they shouldn't have been able to, data, data mine it for hints and links. Don't worry though, if you beat the demo, or if you die, you'll still be able to restart and play it. However, your 30 minutes is still ticking, so the 30 minutes does not restart. The demo is going to be available through January 31st, and you can get it on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Steam. So make sure that you take your one shot before time runs out. How would you like to play a game one and a half months before it's released? Well, back in December, someone was on Facebook selling copies of Kingdom Hearts 3 for the Xbox One. Turns out this guy knew another guy on the inside and managed to get 30 copies of the much-anticipated game and was selling them on Facebook for $100 a piece. Naturally, people were skeptical, and when they asked him if they were legit, he uploaded some footage of the game's opening hours, divulging some scenes that haven't been released in any official trailer, only adding to his legitimacy. Square Enix quickly got wind, but unfortunately they were too late, and it's very possible that all 30 copies have already been sold. 
Now, a few weeks have passed, and the people who illegally acquired the games have received their copies of Kingdom Hearts 3, and have taken to Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube, spoiling everything with details and even footage. Some of the spoilers include 10-minute gameplay clips of each world, the full opening cinematic, in-game menus, gummy ship customization, gummy ship gameplay, shop menus, story spoilers, the whole world map, and a list of all of the trophies slash achievements that are available. Game director Tetsuya Nomura has publicly come out and addressed the issue in a statement on Twitter. It also revealed that some of the game's major spoilers have yet to be put into the game, mainly the epilogue and the secret movie that the series is known for having. Nomura also said that this was intentional, and a choice that was made in case something like this happened. Could this be a new way for developers to protect their games by requiring a day one patch in order to get the full story or even play the game to begin with? What would that mean for people who buy disc versions of the game and don't have access to the internet or patches? I cannot stress this enough, be careful if you're looking at the story, as I had a couple things accidentally spoiled for me while I was doing some research, so be warned. Kingdom Hearts 3 is scheduled to release January 25th in Japan and January 29th for the rest of the world. Well, that concludes this week's news update. What do you think of the stories? Is intentionally shipping games with missing content to prevent spoilers a good idea? Should EA change the refund policy? Do you think it's crazy that we only get 30 minutes with the Resident Evil 2 demo? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like this video, consider subscribing! And make sure to click that bell so you can get all the updates whenever they come on out. And if you want to support more, check out this channel's Patreon, as any support would be greatly appreciated, and I really want to see this grow so that I can be able to produce more content for you guys. If you'd like to learn more about any of this week's stories, check out the links down in the description. You've been watching the DLC. My name is Neil, and as always, keep it classy.